In the last video, we looked at different formats that we could use to write so, uh, solution sets to inequalities. We had our standard inequality format. which is going to be x and then some greater than or less than variety of a number. We had a graph, which would be a number line with shading. And we also had a, a new type of notation called interval notation, where we would write the smallest number to the biggest number and use some sort of pr uh, combination of parentheses and brackets in order to record uh, the, the list of sol possible solutions. Now, uh, in many cases, things aren't going to be given to us in these formats before we start. And uh, a lot of times, if you kind of glance at these problems down below, they look a lot like the equations that we solved before, only these, this time we have uh, different types of symbols, greater thans or less thans, instead of the equal signs. When we're trying to isolate or get a variable by itself, because really that's what we want to do uh, to get something in this type of a format for our standard inequality answer, um, the processes and the skills that you learned for equations are going to directly apply here. There are just two exceptions that you need to worry about when we're dealing with inequalities. Otherwise, you do everything just like you would with normal equations. The first exception is this one, and that is, is that um, when we have something that's an equation, if you have, like, for example, well, let's not even do a equals b, let's do something like x equals 3. If you had a solution like this, you could turn things around and write 3 equals x. If things are equal, you can switch sides of the equation and it doesn't matter because they're equal. But when we're dealing with inequalities, if you switch, all, if you switch sides of the inequality, so you flip things around, it's not symmetric, so you don't really get to do that. If you switch the sides of the inequalities, you also have to switch the direction of the inequality. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's look down here at problem number three. Here I have four is less than or equal to t. Well, if you think about what that means, if four is less than t, what that really means is that t has to be greater than or equal to 4. So here I moved the what was on the left to the right and what was on the right to the left. So I switched the sides, but I also have to then switch the direction of the inequality. So I end up with t is greater than 4. This is going to be the best format for having your standard inequality, where you actually have the variable and the symbol in terms of how you describe things. The other way that you want to record your answer is by sketching a graph. And this is what we kind of did in the last section. Put in your number line. So here we want to make sure that we get up to 4 at least. And we want everything that's greater than or equal to 4. So we're going to start at 4. We want everything pointing towards the right. And again, kind of this direction of how things point works as long as your variable is on the left, which is one of the reasons I kind of like to turn things around if I if it doesn't work out that way. So I want everything shaded this direction, but I also want 4 to be a possible solution, so I'm going to shape, fill in that circle. So this is my graph of everything greater than or equal to 4. The last format that you want to re record your answer in is interval notation. And I really like having the graph before I try to figure out interval notation, because I can just look at the picture. The first number that we, so we want two values separated by a comma. The first value should be the one most to the left, which in this case is 4, and I want everything all the way to the right as big as I can possibly get up to infinity. Then I want to use a combination of brackets or parentheses. Um, in this case, I'm going to have a bracket to the left of 4 because I want to include 4 as an answer. I can never reach infinity, so I'm going to make sure I have a parentheses for that infinity symbol. And this bracket 4, comma, infinity parentheses is my interval notation, and it says I want all the answers from 4, including 4, as big as I can possibly get. All right, so that's kind of our, um, if you switch sides, you have to also switch the direction of the inequality. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you're doing your solution process. The other thing to keep in mind uh, that you have to remember, and this is our other thing to be super careful about, is any time that you multiply or divide
both sides of an inequality by a negative number as part of the solving process you have to switch the direction of the inequality The reason for that really goes back to why we switch directions up here. Um, however, this, this is really the big key that you have to pay attention to, and it's really the only thing that you really want to watch for when you're doing these um, types of problems, is if you are solving and in that process, when you're doing something to both sides, um, if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, then we switch the direction. Anything else you do, you don't switch the direction. You keep it exactly the same. So let's keep that in mind. We'll go through and we'll solve each of these inequalities. And again, your goal is always to get the x by itself. And for our purposes here, we really want to get the x on the left-hand side of the inequality as we do that. All right, so let's go through and look at number four. Here's my x. I'd like to get it by itself. It's being multiplied by 3 with a plus 12. We get rid of our weakest link first. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here is to subtract 12 from each side. Now, adding or subtracting doesn't do anything to the direction of my inequality, so it's still going to be less than at this point. On the left, I'm left just with 3x. On the right, negative 6 minus 12 is negative 18. Now, the next thing I want to do to get the x by itself is to divide by 3. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 3 on each side. I'm dividing by a positive 3 on each side, so I do not switch the direction of the inequality. Notice there is a negative in the problem, but the step of my process where I divide on each side, I'm dividing by positive 3, so no switch of the direction of the inequality. Here, I'm left just with x on the left. On the right-hand side, I have negative 18 divided by 3, which is negative 6. So this is my standard format of my inequality. That's one of the forms that I want to write my answer in. I also would like to draw a sketch of what's going on. Again, we kind of you don't have to do a ton of labeling here. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's negative 6. Here I want everything less than negative 6. So I want an open circle at negative 6 because it's not equal to. I want everything to the left. This would be a fine for a graph. The other piece of information that I need is my um, answer solution set written in interval notation. In this case, I can... I want numbers to get as small as possible, so I'm going to use negative infinity as my left boundary. My right boundary is negative 6. I want everything up to negative 6, but not including negative 6. So I'm going to use a parentheses for the negative 6, because it's an open circle, and I'm going to always use parentheses for infinities in my problems. So these would be the three formats for my solution set. All right. Let's try another example here. If we're looking at number 5, again, we want to try to get the y by itself. Um, a couple of things that we can do here. First of all, notice uh, because we have these parentheses, you might want to distribute things out. In this case, notice that we're only distributing on the left-hand side, right? Negative 3 times y is negative 3y. Negative 3 times minus 5 gives me a plus 15. I'm only doing things to one side of the equation here, so I don't need to think about switching the directions of my inequality. The next thing I want to do, I want to get the y by itself, uh, get rid of anything added or subtracted first, so I'm going to minus 15 from each side. Now when I subtract, that doesn't change anything with my inequality, I still have the less than or equal to here. On the right hand side, 6 minus 15 gives me a negative 9. Now to finish the problem, right now I need to get the y by itself. It's being times by negative 3, so I'm going to divide by negative 3. And as soon as you say, I'm dividing both sides by negative 3, warning signs should go off in your head. And what's going to happen, right now I have a less than or equal to, but because I'm dividing by a negative, I have to switch the direction of my inequality. So now it's going to be a greater than or equal to. Here, the negative 3's are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with y is greater than or equal to negative 9 divided by negative 3 gives me a positive 3. And that's going to be my um, standard format for my inequality. In this case, when I go to make my number line, I need everything greater than or equal to 3. So you're going to have a filled-in circle this time at 3, and then we want everything over to the right. That will be my shaded graph. And then in interval notation, I want everything from 3 to infinity. 
I do want to include 3 because it was greater than or equal to, so make sure you use the bracket, and then I want everything up to infinity. If you're not 100% sure, certain if you did the directions correctly, keep in mind that you can pick any number here and put it in the original problem and it should come out to be true. So for example, if I decide maybe I want to pick 6, if I go 6 minus 5 is 1, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, negative 3 is less than or equal to 6, is a true statement. And so you can kind of plug values in the, from your shaded area, put them back in the original inequality, and they should come out to be true, which is kind of cool. All right, last problem up here. Um, in this particular instance, I want to get the x by itself. Um, and I notice that there's two x's. So the first thing you're going to have to do in this problem is to get the x's on, on to the same side of the equation. Now, I have two different ways that I can do this. One is that I can add 2x over here and bring that over to the right-hand side. The other way, and I'm going to kind of do a side-by-side -side here, is that I can add the 3x over to the other side. I kind of like doing this sometimes because it makes things positive. So in this case, if I add 3x to both sides, this is going to cross out. I'm going to be left with 5 is greater than x plus 3. And that's OK. If I do um, things this direction, if I add 2x over here, what I'm going to end up with is negative 1x plus 5. Um, I'm adding, so I don't change the direction of my inequality. And I get negative x plus 5 is greater than 3. Um, over here, I have 5 is greater than x plus 3. This is all good. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is subtract 5 from each side. Um, if I work on this side, I'm going to minus 5 from each side. Subtracting does not switch the direction of my inequality, so I just bring it down. Now I'm left with negative x is greater than negative 2. The x isn't by itself yet, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. Remember, when you divide both sides by negative 1, you have to switch the direction of the inequality. And what I'm left with is a plain x is less than positive 2. If I do things this other direction, I want to show you I do get the same answer. Here I get 5 is greater than x plus 3. I'd have to subtract 3 from each side, which gives me 2 is greater than x. This is fine, but I really like my x to be on the left-hand side. So if you're switching the direction, or you're switching sides, so I have x on the left, you also switch the direction of the inequality. So either way, I end up with x has to be less than 2. And then we want to be able to draw a graph of that. Um, because it's just less than, I want to use an open circle. I want everything to the left. And if I'm writing this in interval notation, I want everything from negative infinity up to 2, not including 2, and you can never include infinity. So there's going to be my um, in interval notation version of my solution. So really not a whole lot of extra thing to keep track of. The main thing is just if you switch sides, as part of your solution process, make sure you switch the direction of in your, your inequality. And if you multiply or divide both sides of your inequality by a negative during the process of solving, that's when you're going to switch the direction of the inequality as well. And then don't forget, um, always record your answers in all of these possible formats and notations um, when you're recording your answers for your homework.